Hello, my name is Ethan Kessar. I am a freelance videographer here in the Indiana area, and I produce things for businesses and brands to help them be successful online. And I make my own content to promote myself and practice and hone my skills. So this movie was one of those things where I wanna test out some gear, flex my muscles a little bit, try some narrative work. Absolutely, you could slap a brand name in this video somewhere and it could be a kind of a commercial type thing or some kind of digital content. So those are the things I try to help my clients produce so that they can be successful online and engage with their followers and utilize the social media channels that so many businesses have but don't end up actually utilizing. So if that sounds like you, if those are problems that you have, you have this social media account that's just dead and you don't post very often to there because you're good at making coffee or you're good at uh, serving your customers or doing whatever you do, uh, get in contact with me. I can help you make video content that helps your brand be successful, promotes you, and encourages customers, new employees, all kinds of people to look at you guys in the very best light. So if that's something that could help you out, please contact me, go to my site, and we can get a consultation started. So with these first shots, I'm just trying to establish some kind of loneliness and melancholy. Um, I'm actually working from home, so she actually isn't spending that much time alone by herself. Um, but I knew that this was a relatable message for a lot of people that uh, they're very sad about their dogs being left home alone. So that is what I tried to capture. Um, you can see here she's looking up on some steps and then through the hallway that's where my office is and so i just want to convey once again from her perspective what might she be thinking as she stares at me working all day and sitting in front of a computer you know obviously dogs don't really understand what people do on their computers all day and with their phones um, so this shot here there's a light off to the side and i just wanted to get a little clip of her walking outside I actually had some clips that were really good of her walking outside, but uh, unfortunately she wasn't wearing the collar. So I had to reshoot that to make sure it matched the uh, snow footage. Uh, obviously here we're operating in slow motion. Um, so I really like obviously how she looks when she runs. I think it's very beautiful and majestic. It reminds me of, you know, all kinds of animal documentaries. We have cheetahs and uh, big cats running. She just, you know, really if you just look at her body she is engineered to sprint um, and run for a very long time and very quickly and I just think it's very interesting to watch but I think another thing I really liked about the outdoor footage was that it was actively snowing and so you can see little flakes coming down around her um, and I think that adds a lot of image to it she obviously runs around on every occasion that she can outside but so there's something about when it's fresh snow on the ground, uh, the image just kind of comes together a lot because she kind of stands out from the background um, and everything just looks a lot prettier. And then yes, she does know not to dig, uh, but she does dig a lot. Um, and uh, so I thought that'd be a silly thing to kind of end the video on is her doing something naughty. But looking here at this video, I had to work with my dog. She is a lovely animal. She is very kind and sweet and very excitable. So it's kind of hard to make her look sad and bored uh, because anytime you're around her, she's pretty much just like wagging her tail, like, what are we gonna do next? I kind of had to play the slow game and just kind of let her do her thing. She really does not like cameras. She's fascinated and interested in almost everything in this world, but cameras kind of throw her off. Big black boxes with glass in on them and probably smell weird. So I understand where she's coming from. So that was one way I was able to kind of make her a little uncomfortable was kind of just pointing the camera at her for a few moments she kind of would get uh get put off pretty quickly by that when you see her behind the gate uh the red lighting section she was just wagging her tail the whole time so i kind of just had to pick shots where i couldn't see her tail so yeah a little bit about the technical details once again i shot almost everything on the sigma 35 1.2 uh, i find that that lens is just something that you can put on the camera and it doesn't need to come off 
It has pretty well controlled focus breathing. It's a very sharp lens, which is generally the kind of commercial look that I'm going for. I just like that when it's necessary, I can just punch down to one, two. With the Sony FX6, the autofocus is just so good. And so doing anything at 1.2 is, is not a problem. Many, many times on the shoot, I was not using the lens at 1.2. I'm trying to work on when it comes to storytelling, uh, I always want to kind of be showing and using the backgrounds and everything that's in the image to tell a story. And so by not blurring some of the images, I think I was able to include some more background details and help uh, understand the context of what I'm trying to convey. I did use the Sony FX6. I really have it rigged out in a nice way. I've got a five and a half inch monitor, Deity S Mic 2S. I have a custom uh, mic holder that I really like. I have a Bebop, a V-mount plate that's just mounted on rails. It's not a special one. And so I'm able to power everything through the D-taps there and uh, keep a backup battery in the camera always just so that if there is a problem with the V-mount plate, I can always roll for around two hours without any problems. I really love having backup batteries. It's always annoying like I have to turn off the monitor if I need to change out the V-mount battery, but the Sony FX6 can just stay on because uh, that backup battery is inside there. As far as lighting goes, I had a Aperture 300D that I would put up in the larger rooms to just fill the space with light. And if uh, you're using Philips Hue bulbs, I find that they don't flicker if you put them up to maximum. So always have them up at 100%. I did experience some flicker on set a few times. And so I would just change my shutter speed very slightly and try to get rid of that flicker. I believe the FX6 has a special way to do that, but I would just click it up one because uh, people won't be pixel peeping this, I don't believe. That is something that's always tough about house lighting and lighting in your spaces. You know, when you are working quickly and trying to get things done, putting together a beautiful lighting package for every single room and shot is if something that takes a lot of time and it's very difficult. So if you can work within some of the house lightings and just make sure you auto white balance your camera, Make sure to custom white balance your camera. Don't leave it on auto white, white balance. That won't quite work. Embracing those practical lights and just trying to figure out how you can augment and improve the lighting with some kind of directional stuff I think is really helpful. And yeah, I think the 300D is a really good baseline of like, it's bright enough to get the job done and overpower some things. And especially if you work with a 300D in a completely dark space, you can really do some cool stuff with it because it is so powerful. I definitely really like uh, some of the Aperture products that are a little more powerful, 600D, 600C, 1800. I think those are all really nice tools for filmmakers for overwhelming all kinds of sun and things like that. When it comes to lighting in the outdoor environment, I obviously didn't have a chance to uh, chase her around with any lights or anything like that. So that was just luck of the weather. It was turned out to be cloudy while it was snowing. So when things are super, super bright outside, I find that the FX6 can get overwhelmed. And because it goes only up to seven stops of ND, it doesn't quite, uh, it's not quite able to keep up with the image and make sure that those highlights don't clip. So I always find that it's helpful to go out when it's cloudy or also have a 10 stop ND for when it's really sunny outside. I don't recommend combining a, a filter and the inner system, but if you just have a straight 10 stop ND, that can help you with some of the outdoor stuff uh, with the FX6 when it's really bright. And especially if you're gonna be in snow, 10 stop is an absolute must. But I don't believe I used any ND while I was out there. I think it was all just a little bit of clouds and adjusting my aperture to be pretty wide to make sure that it, the autofocus was able to keep up with her. It is unfortunate, but I don't think that the FX6 has animal autofocus, which I think is just a little silly. I think if I pay the same price as the A1, I should get all of the software features that that camera has. So I would really like to have a more robust autofocus system. I love focus peaking. It's really good and it's really effective but I also think it's really important for the camera to say, here's where I'm trying to focus. And I wish that it would put some kinds of boxes on the screen to say like here, this is what I think the subject is right now. And that can help you when you want to override it. As far as camera stabilization, I didn't use a gimbal or even a tripod really very much. I did everything handheld. I think the FX6 with the nice lens and 
uh, a large battery is a nice handheld rig, but obviously if you add a V-mount and a monitor, uh, I honestly feel like my rig is kind of pushing up against probably too heavy for handheld. Definitely if I'm holding it for very long at all, I'm ready to <laughs> ditch it and put it on a tripod. Everything I did, I would just kind of lead it on my knee, try to get three or four points of contact. Uh, a lot of times that V-mount battery is going to be pushing up against my elbow and my chest here. Um, and I do have a chest pad that I like to use to push it up against. There's a little bit of cushion there. But then a lot of the shots in this piece were actually more from the dog's perspective. So a lot of things I was hanging on for dear life to my camera with the top handle and trying to get things from her perspective. I don't know if I like to call it a video or a short film or whatever. Uh, makes sense. I definitely like to lean into some of those uh, elements that make it kind of look sort of uh, trying to be like classy and cool. And then when I do silly stuff like put work and business on like computer screens, I think that juxtaposition of like very serious and very silly makes a good joke of things. And I think it's really funny. Uh, I showed, have showed this to my wife and she, you know, was emotionally manipulated by my images uh, with, uh, I think a lot of people experience the guilt of leaving their dog at home. Uh, I personally recommend crating your dog when you're away. I think that helps them feel safe and secure and just lets them sleep in a place that uh, makes them happy and helps keep them out of mischief. But it is kind of a sad thing, you know, you're rushing out the door, you slam that gate shut and you just feel guilty about it while you're gone or you try not to think about it at all. So I really wanted to play into that thought process because I think that it's funny <laughs> that people feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> I love my dog too and I spend a lot of time at home and I'm, I'm with her and I can go love on her whenever I want. So I just, uh, I just know a lot of people feel that way and I thought it would be good to uh, use that as a tool to express uh some joy for the puppies you know things that they like to do and make them happy um it's always great to share those things and i am so lucky to have a dog who uh is not obese uh weird flex but uh yes a lot of people struggle with dogs that are overweight um and i clearly uh, don't have a dog with that problem but uh, she does have the opposite problem and um her happy amount of walking and running miles is five that is like the number that will kind of tire her out and make her feel like wow i had a good day today uh, as far as we can tell so that is a lot of time and effort for me and my partner to uh, put into making sure she is happy i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you maybe learned a little bit about filmmaking a little bit about telling stories uh, maybe a little bit about filmmaking gear. And once again, if you are in the Indiana area and are interested in making products like this to represent your brand online, I'd be more than happy to talk to you about what your brand does and how I can share really incredible images online to promote your business. If you'd like to support me and help pay for my dog's food, there is a link to a moment shop down below. If you buy something through that link it will help support the channel and support me and help me pay for my dog's food so i really appreciate that if you do if you have any gear questions i'm trying to put together my list of gear i kind of bounce around between the fx6 and the nikon world anything that you're curious about how some things come together i would always love to uh, talk gear that's my <laughs> passion is filmmaking gear that works for people and gets them gets their jobs done so if you're interested in anything like that please let me know in the comments and i will try to put together a gear list that is helpful for you and uh yeah if you're interested in filmmaking and nikon cameras a little bit of fx6 cameras uh, i would love to have you subscribe to this channel and learn more about what i have coming up next thanks for watching